Um, so the last time I was up here lay leading, everybody was wondering where I had my notes and how I was doing that. So this is my Braille reader. And it's basically like a um, Kindle and a note taker all in one. And um, there's like a row of little pins that come up to make the Braille dots. And you just, when you press the button to go to the next line, a different bunch of pins comes up to make a new line of dots. So I have my note taker up here that I'm reading. And it also has the ability to tell me the time. So <laughs> I'll try to be um, aware of that. And it's been a couple decades since I've been let loose in a quote-unquote pulpit. So, <laughs> so I'll um, try to be worthy. Um, if I start to get emotional, which I think I'll be going too fast to get too emotional about anything, but you never know what nerves are going to do. But it's a happy story overall. But if I do, somebody just go, hachu or something to get me back on track. <laughs> But um, I grew up in a very Christian family, very evangelical. Some of my formative memories were of um, sitting on my dad's lap with my twin sister on Sunday mornings, and um, we would be watching Oral Roberts together or Kenneth Copeland. Some of you might know those names. They were um, really big in like the faith healing ministry. And uh, my parents really put a lot of stock in these faith healers. And for good reason, I guess, they had four blind children. Um, all of us are totally blind. So they just um, really wanted like this miracle from God that they had read about in the New Testament or whatever. And they just believed in these people and totally sincerely believed that one day God was going to perform this miracle and we would all get our sight back. Um, and that's just kind of a dream that they held on to and kind of kept them going, I guess. Um, but they, they were just a simple farming family. My dad just had an eighth grade education, but they also had just an abundance of common sense. And they just did a terrific job with us. A lot of people would ask them, well, what's it like raising four blind kids? And they would say, well, that's all we've had, so that's all we know. So to us, it's just normal. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but they just um, encouraged us to speak up for ourselves, speak our minds. They totally believed in us and just said that um, we could accomplish any dream that we wanted to. And um, so they just um, instilled that in us, and we all turned out pretty good, I guess. Uh, we have uh, um, my two brothers and my sister were all scattered all over the country. My sister's in Rapid City, and I have a brother in Austin, Texas, and another brother in Nashville, and um, we all are doing great thanks to that great foundation that we had. And so um, after I graduated high school, I decided to go to college to be a teacher. And um, I also was just very interested in this upbringing and the background that I had with the Bible and stuff, and I wanted to learn more about the Bible and just delve into that more and trying to figure out God and maybe like, why hasn't God done this miracle yet that my um, parents believed in so strongly? So I just thought I would um, learn more about the Bible to try to figure that out. So in Bible college, I double majored in um, elementary education and Bible. And um, it was a Pentecostal Bible college that I had chosen. So I was still like surrounded by the same belief that um, people just really thought that God worked on a daily basis and would reach down and um, perform this miracle for me anytime now. And in fact, um, sometimes I was like taken aside by like another student or a faculty member, and they would say, Kim, I've just really been praying for you, and um, I believe that God has called me to um, pray for you right now so that you'll receive your sight. And uh, so after a few times of this, well, I mean, every time, but after a while, it got a little old and just awkward after this prayer got over, and I'm still standing there blind, like I didn't know if I should apologize to them that I'm still blind, or if they should apologize to me, or what exactly was supposed to happen. So um, there were a few like awkward moments um, around that, but I mean, mostly everybody was pretty normal, and it was a happy time. I have great memories from college, and um, then I, after I graduated, I went to a small Montana town to be a teacher, just like I had always wanted. And um, I also got very involved in um, the church there. 
I became the church pianist, and um, I got involved in Chi Alpha College Campus Ministry, which is basically just like Inner Varsity or Campus Crusade for Christ or one of those. And um, I just really enjoyed like working with college students who were away from home for the first time. I thought I was really able to help them out. And kind of the same with the church. I led Bible studies and um, just loved helping people and doing that kind of work. So my uh, very close friends there who were also like heading up the church and the college ministry there, they encouraged me that since I had already been to Bible college and had this degree in Bible, they said, well, why don't you just take the next step and like get your minister's license so that you can do all these things on a more official basis. So um, those friends actually um, went out shopping with me and got me an outfit for my first sermon that I preached. <laughs> And I still have that outfit. I'm not sure it still fits, but uh, um, yeah, so I did go ahead and get my um, minister's license then. So I was able to actually preach sermons. And um, my friends always um, kind of bugged me by calling me Reverend Hoffman, but <laughs> um, that was more sophisticated than I wanted. But I just really loved all of that. And I just felt very fulfilled and very um, encouraged. So all that just to kind of point out that um, none of the changes that came about were like really through bitterness or anything because I was I, I had a good upbringing and a good um, start in life I think and I actually ended up marrying uh, another minister and so then we pastored a series of small churches in small towns across Montana and the Dakotas. We moved quite often and these were like really small churches in small towns. And rather than like combining with other churches so they could actually accomplish something, they all just stayed in their own little niche and were kind of their own like ingrown social club. Like they weren't really able to reach out beyond themselves very much. So that um, kind of made me stop and think like, what are these gatherings actually for? I mean, there's nothing wrong with social clubs, of course, but I just began wondering, well, is there more that we could actually do to reach out beyond our own four walls? And a lot of the time we couldn't even help the people in the four walls because there just wasn't money or people to go around to meet all the needs. Um, um, some of these churches gave us like a parsonage to live in as the pastor's family, and uh, but they really couldn't pay us much beyond that. So, um, and we had two kids by that time, and they of course were a joy, a boy and a girl, so one of each. And um, we were, but finances were just a struggle the whole time. That was probably the hardest part of everything. I mean, I learned pretty early on that. Um, parenting while broke was way harder than parenting while blind um, because um, of being blind, I mean, I was used to that and accustomed to improvising, adapting, and overcoming. But um, when you just don't have the money to stretch, there's just so many needs that you would like to meet and so many things that um, you're not able to do. And of course, we were a very conservative family, so we um, didn't reach out for government help or anything like that. We thought we should pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, whatever that means. And so I was just um, starting to have questions like, why is this all so hard? Why does nothing I'm preaching or my husband is preaching really seem to be working in real life? And um, maybe should, should we be doing something else that's more effective? But who am I going to express these questions to? I'm supposed to be the one with the answers, not the questions. So um, that went on, and I decided to homeschool my kids so that they wouldn't be exposed to the dreaded concepts like evolution or climate change. I figured that I would um, teach them myself and kind of keep them away from all those things. Um, uh, thankfully, technology was really advancing right around this time. I mean, thanks to technology, especially now, and it's just getting better and better and advancing more and more, and more quickly all the time, um, and it's really turned blindness into nothing more than an inconvenience rather than a handicap. Like my sister and I were able to ch take an Uber here today just fine and um, just so many um, advantages like that. Even though we can't drive, there are ways to get around now. And I had a um, talking computer. 
which between that and the internet was just a game changer to me. The computer would um, like read me what was on the screen and so it would read me whatever I wanted. I could go shopping totally independently um, and get like the, my computer to read the descriptions of whatever I was buying. Then I could use my credit card independently and just buy whatever I needed online. So it just uh, made me into a really more independent person. And of course I could read articles um, the same news articles at the same time that everybody else was reading rather than waiting a week or a month for something to come out in Braille. Um, so one of the things I did on there was joined these um, Christian uh, evangelical conservative Christian um, forums for homeschooling parents because that's what I was and I wanted to talk to other people like me and um, so they were just uh, forums where parents could get together and talk about educating their kids and what they were learning and studying and things like that. And so like I said, I was in these really small towns where there was no Uber or anything like that, or Uber probably wasn't even around back then. Um, so I was really like housebound a lot when my husband was off doing his odd jobs or whatever to try to help us make ends meet. And so these um, social media and these forums just became really important to me because that was like the inter only interaction pretty much that I had with other adults. And um, so I um, just encourage people to realize that um, don't be a little social media or say that it's not real life because for a lot of people it is um, a big part of their real life. And I realize now that it's gotten um, to a place where it's a lot, there's a lot of toxic things on there that are best avoided, um, but it still plays an important role and is still influential, so we can't just pretend that it doesn't exist. Um, on a lot of these discussion forums, they're like message boards, and so you can like leave a message on there and then somebody can um, answer you or reply to you in their own time. And then these messages just kind of stack up on top of each other. So you just kind of go through and read the whole discussion. And the discussion can go on for days or weeks. So you can really like delve into topics and um, just get viewpoints and opinions on it from all sides and all perspectives. So it's not like Twitter where somebody will just make a smart mouth remark just to get the likes. I mean, these forums that I'm talking about are more serious. You can still find serious discussion forums like that, like on Reddit. Some of them are kind of really out there, too. But, I mean, you can find a lot of good places on the Internet where um, good, important, life-changing discussions take place. There's also, like, newsletters, and then communities will develop around these newsletters, um, just discussing them, and then so you're able to find like-minded like people and you can all discuss things together. And nowadays, there's, you have to be a lot more intentional about seeking out communities like that because there's so many other attention grabbers on there that aren't as worthy. But um, great internet communities do exist and are very important for a lot of people. So I'm going to read this next little bit from one of the explanations that I wrote several years ago because I think I expressed it very well and um, succinctly, so it kind of tells you what happens next. So I was on the internet on an evangelical Christian forum for homeschooling parents, conservative, and we were studying and discussing history and science and politics together, and we were hearing from um, GASP Catholics about how they were the original church, the ones who actually preserved the Bible for the rest of us. And was that really true? I started studying church history to find out for myself. And the more I learned about all that, the more I realized it was people who chose certain books to actually be in the Bible. It was people inventing and um, fighting over these various Christian doctrines, like of the Trinity and whatever. It was all very human-oriented and came together and was preserved to us by humans. I mean, before that, I guess I had kind of, if I thought of it at all, I just thought the Bible kind of floated down to us on a cloud, all complete. <laughs> but that's really not how it all happened. So that just all just made me kind of stop and go, hmm, just to learn about how all these doctrines came together in such a human way. And 
Also on these forums, there was a homeschooled dad who just loved science, and he graciously spent many hours actually explaining um, scientific concepts to us, like evolution um, and how that all works and why it's an accepted and respected part of scientific theory today. And he just um, took the time to explain so many concepts to us that made it made sense. Like I remember he was trying to explain the concept of um, like the radioactivity and carbon dating. And so he like used the concept of microwave popcorn and um, you put the bag in the microwave for a while. And then um, like if a, the scientist was there, he could count the unpopped kernels in the bag and determine from that how long the bag had actually been in the microwave and just stuff like that. And he used the concept of some kind of other magic popcorn to explain the concept of like half-life to us and just he made it so fascinating and interesting. And um, so for about a dozen of us, we were uh, on this forum, there were like a dozen of us moms that were just loving this and totally fascinated and learning so much from this. But the rest of the ladies on that forum, there were probably a couple hundred of them, they were like annoying silly flies just buzzing around us about hell and how we were putting our very souls in danger by listening to the knowledge of man on this stuff. And so this um, dad started learning too much and thinking too much, and he was accused of it all the time. The people just said, just stop thinking about all this and turn these thoughts over to God. So um, he actually left the forums for a while, um, for about six months, because he just wanted to be able to talk freely with other people who were actually able to think critically <clears throat> about these things. And so he, he left us to our own devices, but he did come back to the forums about six months later and when he came back, he was atheist. And I, rem <laughs> I remember being just so sad about this because he had been such a smart Christian ally, like bolstering my faith, and now he was lost, like doomed for hell as far as I was concerned. And, but he graciously started sharing that journey with us too, just like he had about the science and everything else. It's just um, amazing how some people are so willing to share. Um, and he was just um, answering our questions. I debated with him, trying to show him the light once again. And I began to realize something, that he wasn't like those dirty atheists that I had always heard about. <laughs> uh, just like those Catholics and those liberals that I was getting to know on the forums weren't as evil as I was, had always heard they were either. In fact, I knew, knew that this dad had one of the biggest hearts of anybody on that forum, and he was making sense, a lot of sense. And a lot of the things that he was saying were just like making me stop and ponder. So that's how it works. You let yourself be touched by other people, and um, maybe people out of your comfort zone. You can really find a lot of those kind of people on the internet. And, um, but they can change you if you actually just stop and listen to what they're saying. And it, of course it takes two. It takes the person to be willing to share also. Um, so the other thing about the internet is you can be touched by people all over the world and from all different cultures, all different religions, and you can just learn so much from them. So the internet is just really making the world a smaller place. Um, there are lots of stories of people that have been trapped in cults who were able to escape because of things they learned and conversations they had with people on the internet. So, and you have to give credit to these Christian forums for allowing these open and frank discussions to take place. I'm sure at first they thought there wasn't anything to worry about because there were like hundreds of um, strong Christians on there. And um, so they thought any other point of view would just kind of be drawn, drowned out. But with thoughtful people are going to come thoughtful questions. And that's what I love about you, you, that... Um, thoughtful questions and discussions are encouraged. And a lot of churches can't really have that because the questions are too dangerous and they go against their very narrow worldviews and their very narrow doctrines. 
So if you're in an environment where your honest questions are shut down, I think that's a sure sign that you need to get out of that environment. But these um, forums did allow for that kind of um, frank and honest discussions, for a time at least. And something interesting I've learned about um, a lot of these homeschool forums that encourage critical thinking and discussion, they are becoming a lot more um, liberal and open-minded. Um, so that's kind of what happens, because um, there's a lot of like smart moms on there wanting to learn and wanting to do the best they can for their kids. So they're asking honest questions and willing to research, and then they take what they've learned back to their communities and back to the forums where they can, the content, uh, discussion goes on and continues. So I was just fascinated that by all that I had been learning and I would just started digging around and trying to research things on my own to see how much of it was correct. And I started wondering, well, should I actually teach my daughter evolution? And um, I remember the first time I um, emailed my siblings and I told them evolution actually makes a lot more sense than I used to believe. And um, I was just thinking so much and studying and was soaking up so much new information like a sponge and reading political discussions on the forums and actually learning what made the liberal side think the way that it did. Um, one regret I have now is how many years I spent just so fascinated by and studying this one book, the Bible, when there are so many other resources out there to, that I could have been learning from as well. So. I, but I was just afraid back then of learning too much or just ignorant of the things I didn't know. Um, so I was, um, through all this exposure that I had to like the whole new world on the internet, I was gradually changing and one day, a couple of years um, down the road from that initial experience on the forums, I realized that I was very changed, at least in my head. And I realized that I no longer believed the things that I used to believe. And it was a very gradual change. It took me a while to even realize it myself or admit it to myself. Um, not many people knew about it outwardly yet, but I just had gained so much information and there was no going back. Once you learn things, you can't unlearn them. So. Even if I was a little afraid, I knew that I had to just keep going forward because going backward wasn't an option. So big changes like this don't just happen overnight or on a whim. Um, people don't just wake up one morning and decide to leave their tribe or stop trusting their tribe that they've always had. Um, uh, a lot of thought, sweat, and tears goes into these big decisions, and they don't just happen lightly, so we need to have respect for that process um, no matter where it takes somebody. So it's, uh, it was kind of hard for me to decide what to focus on today because um, there's, of course, a lot more to the story, a whole other story about how um, uh, these changes actually affected me and my life and the people around me. Um, a whole story about how a couple caring people, like my sister, started to figure me out and draw me out, and how I reluctantly started sharing more and more bits of my new self that um, the first time I tentatively told somebody online that I just don't believe so many of the things that I used to believe, and how he accepted that, which gave me the courage to tentatively whisper it to somebody offline in my quote-unquote real life, and how, of course, it did eventually lead me to having to um, take actions to change my life and my circumstances, and how people reacted to that, how, thank goodness, I had very supportive siblings who I'm very close to, who were at least willing to listen and didn't shut me out or shut me down like so many others had. Um, my brother was taking his own um, particular journey and um, kind of ending up in the same spot that I had. And my sister is just really um, a really great listener and totally willing to ask questions and try to see all sides of whatever issue she's um, talking about or learning about. So that caused her to really start studying on her own. And she eventually um, reached a lot of the same conclusions that my brother and I had. 
Our youngest brother has um, resisted all of us, and is, he's still a very committed Christian, and we have all kind of landed in different spots politically as of right now, but we're still able to discuss things together and share our views, and most of all, still have fun together. And um, my parents weren't as supportive, which was um, surprising because they had always like encouraged us to speak our minds and to ask questions and learn and whatever. But I guess this was just a step too far for them and they just couldn't wrap their heads around the new me and they started blaming me for how we were all falling away from the faith. And then my dad said that he just couldn't relate to us anymore and he stopped attending family gatherings with us which was so sad because we wanted to still relate to him and we had no hard feelings toward him for the great dads that he had been while we were growing up. And so we wanted to um, keep that relationship, but he just said that he couldn't, which was very sad because I know that he was just as brokenhearted about it as we were, but that's what he thought his faith and his, his God were demanding of him. So that was kind of a bleak time, also bleak because I was back in this um, small town in Montana where I had first started out after college and where I had done um, all the church ministry and was so involved in um, church work and everybody had known me as this committed, forceful, evangelical Christian and they couldn't quite figure out the new me at all. And also by this time, I had gone through an, an anger phase because I had just kind of felt so betrayed by my faith and all the things that I didn't know before and the things that I wasn't taught. And so as outspoken as I had been before as a Christian, I was now willing to be just as outspoken and preach just as much about my new beliefs. And um, people really couldn't figure that out. They thought, well, fine, change if you want to, but just be meek and quiet and kind of ashamed about it. And um, that wasn't going to happen. So <laughs> um, I started speaking out like on Facebook and other social media, and people just hated that. And eventually I did calm down a little. And... Um, I got back together with some of my friends from the old days, um, from way back when, and they started coming back around again, and I had some great talks with them, nothing too deep, but I was able to share that I still loved them, and they said that they still loved me, and that we could reminisce about some of the times we had had together and still appreciate each other. And I found that one-on-one, -on -one, those people can be very loving to the outsider. It's when they're a group or a political force or a herd that they can be um, dangerous and unthinking and uncaring. But anyway, once again, it was the online communities that saved me. I found some podcasts and some like-minded people to talk to. And some of them joined my Facebook page so that they could surround me and cheer me on when my real life community was giving me a hard time. And so and I got through that. And it's another whole story how our parents sort of came around again at the end of their lives, thanks to my sister showing extraordinary patience and love toward them and kept reaching out to them so that when they needed us, she was right there. And we were all able to gather around and have some good talks with our dad at the end so that I was, um, so um, we all came to a better understanding that we had to have. So those talks with him were really healing and um, so I was looking around to get out of that small stifling town um, as soon as I could. And so one of the options I was looking at was Bozeman. And when my son said that he was coming here to college, I said, well, great. I think that's a sign that's where I'm going to. <laughs> so um, yeah, I started preparing to come here and through the good old internet once again, I found UUF Bozeman, 
And I heard some of Reverend Duffett's messages on um, YouTube and some of Reverend Margot's messages and messages from some of you. And I looked at the website and all the great things that you're so involved in around the community and the way you just um, help out wherever you can. So I was basically hooked before I even got here. <laughs> So um, it's nice to um, have you all actually in my real life now instead of just online. So thanks for letting me be a part. <laughs>